Uh, Lisa, thanks so much. Now, folks, a special, special treat from Geneva, Switzerland. Charles Weiplatz joins us, one of the dominant textbooks of Europe, uh, certainly somebody way, way out front on uh, the Greek crisis. And, of course, David Blanchflower with me here at Dartmouth College. What a treat to have both of you on. Uh, Professor Weiplatz, you have been out front. Now what for Greece? How big will the haircut be? Well, right now, the, the Greek bonds are selling for 40 centimes to the euro, uh, so it's a pretty good indication. I think anything that's a, a half high haircut plus or minus 10 percent would be fine. I mean, it's a big, big haircut. Can the banks take the damage here from the crisis? Can they be recapitalized? And then can we move on in 2012? Well, that's the big question, of course. It's, mind you, it's only the beginning. Greece is not the only country that will have to take a haircut. But sticking to Greece for the time being, yes, it's a big haircut. Yes, a number of banks will be badly hurt. Uh, this is hardly surprising. It's been uh, nearly two years now that the Greek crisis started. And those who haven't sold their Greek bonds uh, should, uh, should have expected what's happening now. So either right. the banks got prepared or they got completely wrong and they will pay a high price for that. I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's look at the price right now, folks. I want to show you this chart, Athens Calling. It's about Greece, and it is uh, sport to say the least. Um, oh, we got the wrong series in there. That's Athens Calling. It's supposed to be the Greek spread, and it's widened out to a big time. That chart's off the mark, so we'll pull that down. Professor Blanchflower, question, please, for Charles Weiplatz. Um, I, I just thought all those things you said were really very interesting, but my, the way I've kind of characterized it is we've seen dither and deny. Do you think that um, the, 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 European, the euro area, the ECB, they can actually move fast enough? I mean, we, we've talked about what they need to do, but they've just moved so slowly. Is that the really big problem? They just can't move fast enough. Yeah, what's, what's very difficult is that we have to deal at the same time with uh, countries defaulting and uh, banks uh, possibly failing. Uh, he, again, this has been expected for a long time. Uh, the European uh, Stability Fund is geared up to do something for banks, that's fine. Uh, and then uh, we still have to deal with, with the government debts. Here we wait for the ECB to do something to sort of backstop uh, the extent of disaster that could happen on public debts. But doesn't it sound like it's too, I mean the worry is it's all too little too late. I mean you sound fairly confident, I'm less confident. Too little too late, is that, is that fair? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been too little too late for a very long time. Uh, it was always <laughs> known new, that right? would be... Uh, it, would, it was always known that would be a moment of truth. This moment of truth is approaching. I think what we'll see is more muddling through uh, with little injections uh, by the FCF and by the ECB uh, just to tidy us for another week or two or another month or two. But I don't see so any big game it. plan coming up. The mm -hmm. Right. We're going to leave it there.